Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over three worked examples to show you how to do problems involving resistors in parallel. Now, if you haven't already done so, check out my previous video covering the theory on this topic, and that way you can apply what you learned in that video to this one. So let's get started. Question 1 says, in the following circuit, find the total resistance between X and Y, and then it says to use all three methods. So I'm going to show you three methods of how you can calculate the total resistance of resistors connected in parallel. The first thing to notice is we've got X and Y here, so we want to find the total resistance using these three parallel resistors. So the first method I'm going to show you is the lowest common denominator method. And this is one that doesn't really need a calculator unless you're using more complicated numbers. So writing down what we know from the question here, we're trying to find the total resistance. Let's call R1 20 ohms, R2 20 ohms, and R3 10 ohms, just working our way down from the top to the bottom of the resistors in parallel. And we can then write down our equation for resistors in parallel, which is 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers, we get 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10. And what we need to do now is look at the denominators of these three fractions and decide what the lowest number is that all three numbers go into. So in this case, 20 and 20 both go into 20 once, and 10 goes into 20 twice, so that would be the lowest number that they all go into, i.e. the lowest common denominator. So if I want this one to become 20, then I need to times the bottom by 2, and if I times the bottom by 2, then I need to times the top of the fraction by 2 as well. So this becomes 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 2 over 20, and now because I've got all fractions with the same denominator, I can simplify it and add them together. So this gives me 4 over 20, and now what I need to do is flip both sides, because you'll notice that right now I've got 1 over RT, so 1 over RT is 4 over 20, but if I want RT over 1, which is the same as just RT on its own, then I need to flip both sides. So I get RT equals 20 divided by 4, and that gives me 5 ohms. Method 2 is what I call the brackets method, and this is one that mainly uses a calculator. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find RT, R1 is 20 ohms, R2 is 20 ohms, and R3 is 10 ohms, just like before. So writing down our equation, just like we did in method 1 for resistors in parallel, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers, just like we did before, we get 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10. And notice how I've written it in one line this time. This is just to show you what it would look like when you're inputting it into your calculator using brackets. So this is what you would actually type on your calculator. So you would do bracket 1 divided by 20 bracket plus bracket 1 divided by 20 bracket plus 1 divided by 10 bracket. But if you were writing this down as steps of working to a question, you could just write it as fractions and know to put it into your calculator using brackets. So what you should get if you put that into your calculator is 4 over 20. And then to flip both sides, we get RT equals 1 divided by answer. So you could just click the buttons on your calculator, 1 divided by answer, to get RT, which will give you 20 over 4, which is the same as 5 ohms. So we should expect the same answer as method 1 because it's just the same question we're doing, remember. The last Last method, method 3, is one I call the inverse x to the minus 1 button method, and this again uses a calculator, so it's a specific button in your calculator that is used for this kind of question. So writing down what we know from the question again, just like we did in the other two methods, we're trying to find RT, we know that R1 is 20 ohms, R2 is 20 ohms, and R3 is 10 ohms. So writing down our equation for resistors in parallel, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers just like we've done in both methods 1 and method 2, this equals 1 over 20 plus 1 over 20 plus 1 over 10. And now what you would do in your calculator is you would input the buttons 20 and then the x to the minus 1 button plus 20 x to the minus 1 button plus 10 times x to the minus 1 button. So this is what you would type on your calculator. And this will then give you an answer. And then to flip both sides to find RT, you need to do x to the minus 1 again, but using your answer to that. So you can click answer and x to the minus 1 button again on your calculator, and this will give you your final answer of 20 over 4, which is the same as 5 ohms. Now the last thing to mention here is a top tip, which is that the total resistance in parallel is always less than the smallest resistance value. So notice how our total resistance here in parallel is 5 ohms, but our smallest resistance value was actually double that at 10 ohms. So this is actually always the case, and it doesn't matter what the resistance values are for the resistors, this is always going to hold true. So this is a good way of checking that your final answer is roughly what it should be. Question 2 says that a student sets up a circuit using a 12 volt supply and two lamps. Each lamp has a resistance of 4 ohms. The resistance of the variable resistor is 6 ohms. Calculate the total resistance of the circuit. 
Well, you'll notice we've got our 12 volt supply there with an ammeter, a switch, and then two bulbs in parallel with a variable resistor. And the variable resistor has a voltmeter across it. Well, what I'm gonna do first of all is just label on the resistance values that we were given for these components in parallel, as that'll help us with the question. So the first lamp is four ohms, and so is the second lamp, and the variable resistor, it says, is six ohms. So now we have three components in parallel that have three resistances. So to find the total resistance of this circuit, we want to use our total resistance in parallel equation. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find RT, we know that R1 is 4 ohms, R2 is 4 ohms, and R3 is 6 ohms. And writing down the equation for resistors in parallel, we get 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Again, stopping at R3 because we only have 3 resistance values. Substituting in the numbers, we get 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4 plus 1 over 6. And I'm going to use the lowest common denominator method to answer this, but you can choose whether you would want to use that one, or the brackets, or the x to the minus 1 button method. So just use whatever method you prefer from the ones that I showed you. So if we were to use the lowest common denominator method, 4 and 6 both go into 12 as the lowest common denominator. So to get 4 into 12, I need to multiply the bottom and the top of the fraction by 3, and I need to do the same for the second fraction there. And then to get 6 into 12, I need to multiply this by 2 on the top and bottom. So this becomes 3 over 12 plus 3 over 12 plus 2 over 12, and now I've got the same denominator, so I can simplify my fraction. And this becomes 8 over 12, and then I need to flip both sides to get RT. So doing that, I get RT equals 12 over 8, which gives me 1.5 ohms. Lastly, question 3 says a parallel circuit is shown below. So we've got a 230 volt main supply, a 23 ohm lamp, a 46 ohm heating element and a 92 ohm heating element. And we've also got three switches on those branches there. Part A then says to calculate the total resistance when switch S1 and S2 are closed. So if we look back at our picture, that means we can basically ignore our last branch in the parallel circuit if switch S3 is open and we're just assuming here that S1 and S2 are closed. So this is like assuming a smaller parallel circuit here. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 23 ohms and R2 is 46 ohms. And I'm gonna stop there because we're only considering those first two components. Writing down our equation for resistors in parallel, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Substituting in the numbers gives me 1 over 23 plus 1 over 46. And the lowest number that these both go into, using the lowest common denominator method again, is going to be 46. So that means I can leave this one alone, but I need to multiply this one by 2 on the top and bottom to get it into 46. So this gives me 2 over 46 plus 1 over 46, which simplifies to 3 over 46. And then if I flip both sides, I get RT equals 46 over 3. And if you put that into your calculator, you should get an answer of 15.3 ohms. Part B says to calculate the total resistance when all switches are closed. So if we look back at the picture, we're now considering all three switches to be closed, so we now need to take into account all three components in parallel there. So writing down what we know from the question, we're trying to find RT. We know that R1 is 23 ohms, R2 is 46 ohms, and R3 is 92 ohms. Writing down our equation, we have 1 over RT equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. Substituting in the numbers, we get 1 over 23 plus 1 over 46 plus 1 over 92. Using the lowest common denominator method now, we should be able to see that 46 is actually half of 92, and 23 is actually a quarter of 92. So both of these numbers actually go into 92, which means 92 is our lowest common denominator. So 23 goes into 92 four times, so we need to multiply the top and bottom of this fraction by 4, and 46 goes into 92 twice, so we need to multiply this fraction on the top and bottom by 2, and this one can stay as it is. So this gives us 4 over 92 plus 2 over 92 plus 1 over 92, and this means we can now simplify the fractions to give us 7 over 92, and if we then flip both sides we get RT equals 92 over 7, and putting that into your calculator gives a final answer of 13.1 ohms. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.